welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. I am Bonnie Krebs, creator of Watercolor the Art Impressions Way, and uh, we are working through the new release, and I'm going to be going back to the simple scenes again. I love these little guys, and I think they work so great, and I'm gonna show you a little different take with this one. So we're gonna be using the winding scene, and you can see this little path or road, depending what structure you put on here and the size of the structures in the background. Uh, this can be a path or it can be a road. And uh, so we're gonna use it in a little different way. It looks like it's kind of going in a valley and it's going between two hills. But in this case, with our project, I wanna show you how to change it up a little bit and make it look like it's going along the edge of a drop off. So we've got a flat part here and then it looks like this little winding path is going along the edge of a cliff. So super, super easy to do. I love to give you new ideas and ways that you can change up these stamps because they really are super, super versatile. And um, trying something different is really fun to do. So I hope you will give this a try. Uh, in addition to the winding scene, we are going to need a few things and I have a bunch of sets I'm using here. Uh, normally I don't use this many, but <clears throat> in this case, there's a lot of florals and um, foliages in here. And so I'm trying to mix it up and use some different things. So if you don't have the ones that I'm using, of course, when it comes to flowers and foliage, especially down along the edge of this cliff, uh, you can use whatever it is you have in your stash. So I'm gonna show you what I'm using, but feel free to substitute uh, with what you have. Now, here's the structure I'm using. This is the mini cottages set. This is the one I'm using, but you can use any of these or you can use any of the small structures that you have. So it really doesn't matter what little building or church or uh, barn, whatever you have, you can set it up on top of this little cliff overlooking a valley. So again, we're using this one. Uh, now in the flower set three, I just grabbed uh, some different florals that I had, things that I hadn't used in a while. I grabbed this one, but uh, you can also use this one. Uh, let me just show you in here. <clears throat> you can use this little guy here. So if you have the mini, the watercolor mini flower set, this is the little mini one. I'm gonna be using this one and this one. You can also use this one. So if you don't have that one that I just showed you, if you don't have this one, flower set three, you can certainly use this little guy right here. So one and two, these two, and then this one if you don't have this one. And then in flower set two, I'm using the larger one. So basically what I'm doing is putting the larger floral like this in the foreground and then the smaller one in the background. And then in our basic foliage set, we're gonna use the little grass right here. In the flower set, the filler flower. <clears throat> in the branches set, any of these little branches will work. So uh, really what this is for is this little guy in the foreground. So again, you can use a branch, you can use a tree. Uh, you can leave that off if you want to. And then in the mini foliage set, uh, we're gonna use these little trees and this foliage right here. And then in set four, the little blooms from here, but again, any little blooms are gonna work. So feel free to substitute. Uh, that was a lot of sets that I have. So uh, feel free to substitute what you have. If you don't have exactly what I'm using, that's okay. Okay, so let's get started with our basic image. Now here it is right here. This is a clear image, and the reason I went to clear is because it's so easy to line up. It really, really makes a difference if you can see that. And especially on a large stamp like this, it just really makes a difference. And I like the clear uh, when you only have to stamp it one time. When you're stamping in a repeat, you need to have the rubber. That is very, very important. When you're stamping something like foliage or flowers that you're stamping over and over again, you do need to have rubber. But when you're stamping one impression, uh, the clear works great and actually it works great if the lines are a little bit broken and not exactly perfect on here. So another reason why I like the clear. So here we go. We're going to ink this up. Now in this case, we're not going to ink anything on the side. We're just going to ink the little road or the path right down the center. And I don't want it too dark, so I just picked a lighter green. This is a number 158. You can just pick a lighter green or you can use a green that you have like this one and you could just stamp it off. So uh, either way, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what you can make it work. So I'm just using the side, of course, of my marker and coming down along uh, the edge right here. 
and I'm just doing the path only. Just the path. And now I'm gonna take off a little bit right here and a little bit right here because I do want to kind of stamp over, over the path a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I've got some space here uh, where I'm going to stamp this one over and this one over. So I left a little bit of space so we're not fighting that, um, fighting those lines. And actually this is a very light green, so that also makes a difference. So you can see now the winding path. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pencil to help us kind of get an idea of where this is going. So this little, the, the curve, so where this makes a bend, that's where the point of your, your little hill is. And you're just gonna bring it down just like this, and this will help your eyes see where everything is going. So you can see now that the path comes down, and actually this, this is going to remain flat up here. And you can see you've got a little cliff. So super, super easy to do. And putting the pencil line for me really, really helps to see that and to visualize where you're going uh, with your flowers and your foliage. So let's get the little structure in here. Here's our little house and I'm gonna use my positioner, a handy little positioner just because um, I don't wanna guess on where this is going. So I'm going to ink this in two colors. Now with this little structure, it doesn't matter. We're gonna ink it in the brown, the dark brown, 969. And then we're gonna ink it in the dark blue. And <clears throat> it doesn't really matter because it's small, uh, which one you put on first. Now I'm going to stamp it off after I um, stamp it onto my positioner. I'm gonna stamp it off because I don't want it to be too dark. And I'm gonna set this back a little bit on here. Put this little guy at the top of the hill and huff on it. And there we go, we've got our little house on the hill. So you can see the perspective is kind of taking shape here. We've got our little winding road that's going along the cliff, so cute. You know, here's where you can really change it out. You could put a little rustic cabin up here, uh, maybe some pine trees. You know, if you take a little bit of, um, you know, your uh, masking tape, mask that off. You can tuck some pine trees or some fir trees back in here. And you can do the same again with this one here. So you could have fir trees back in here. You could you could color in a little uh, pond or a lake or a river down in here. Uh, just a lot of really, really fun ways that you can use this little winding path along the edge um, of a cliff. Super fun. We're gonna do it the easy way. And uh, it, actually, if you like this project, you wanna see something a little bit more, maybe a little more detailed, uh, put that in the comments. I will check those out and maybe we'll do it on the live next time. So let me know your thoughts. Even though this is Watercolor Wednesday and this is taped, um, I do check those comments out. So um, leave me a comment and let me know what you wanna see, especially if you wanna see more like this. Okay, so let's get going on to the next uh, step here. And we're going to put in uh, our foliage but let's, um, actually, let's let's color this little house first. Let's do that. So I'm gonna get my water, and I'm going to pull, um, of course, pull the color out of the lines. Now this little guy uh, doesn't take much. Um, very simple. Just color in this overhang here, uh, the little windows. And on my sample, I made it really bright and gave it a green roof. So I think I'll do that again. I'll put some green onto my palette. Now this is the warm green 177. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of this and just kind of brush this on. And then I think I will just color under this overhang and maybe I will get some of my dark blue. This is the dark blue 565. This is the one we use all the time. The go-to pen. It works great for so many things. And I'm going to uh, color in these little windows. I'll leave a little detail here. And then let's go just a little bit darker underneath here. And I think I need a little more 
shadow under here. And now I can take my fine tip. So this is my twin tone fine tip, my blue, and really darken this, these little windows. And just kind of come underneath there too. So you can see how this is really shaping up. This doesn't take a lot. And I think I will just add a little more green here onto the roof. And you know, it's always good to kind of mess up the white a little bit, you know, so it's not too stark. Looks like it's kind of in the shadows and um, there's lots of foliage around. And it is kind of in the shadows. Okay, so we got our little house on the hill. <clears throat> Let's just kind of follow this path along just so that we can get some color off of here and get our perspective. That looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and add our flowers in. And I'm just, I'm gonna start with the filler flower here and I'm gonna kind of tuck it uh, behind, tuck the flowers in behind these little, um, these little hill, these little hills. So I'm using a yellow, this is 993, just a bright yellow. And you know, you can, you can use whatever florals uh, or uh, vines or trees, you know, whatever you want to use in here. Uh, this is all going to work. It just kind of depends on what you grab. I just opened my, my stamps and just grabbed a bunch of things. Now this hill here, you can see this one kind of comes up and around. So I'm just going to kind of follow that and bring that up a little bit like this. So once I've got that done now, I'm going to add some of my pink in here. Now I'm gonna start with the background and here's where I'm using the little tiny ones. So I'm gonna use a bright pink, this is 725. And I'm just gonna ink these little guys and just kind of tuck them back in here. And you know, they're really small so we can put them back in here too as well. And then let's go to the larger ones now, <clears throat> since we're coming more to the foreground. These are a little bit bigger. You know, as you come forward, you wanna make sure that you're using larger things so that you get that, get that perspective. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got those flowers in. Let's go ahead and add some water and start with that light that lighter color. Now you could do the you could do the yellow and then add the water too. You can totally do that. And then come back in here to the bright pink. Here you can see these colors start to blend together. Uh, these bright colors, so cute. I just love yellow and pink together so much. Okay, so let's add some trees in here now. And here's where we're gonna use our little guys. <clears throat> these are the brand new ones from the newest set. And I do love these trees so much. They just work great. So I'm just gonna use the dark green. This is the 249. Now you could use the brown if you want to. You can also use um, a combination of both. And in this case, I think I'll just put in um, these little trees like this. That looks pretty good. So now we can add the foliage to it. This little guy right here, and I think I'm gonna change the color. <clears throat> so instead of that dark green, I'm gonna use the warm green, which is the 177. And with this, you just need to stamp it a couple of times and you are good to go. And this can go either direction. So you can turn it. So if you want it to go the other direction, you just turn it on your block. 
just like so. We can actually tuck a tree down in here. And let's just do one back in here too. And now we can add the water and just dab. It'll all kind of blend together, uh, but it just works. It's so much fun. Be sure to leave those white spaces. <clears throat> you know, you don't want to color everything in solid. So be sure to leave those areas where it's white. Okay, it looks like it's starting to take shape here. I'm gonna come in now with some grasses, some little grasses, and kind of define these hills a little bit more. So I'm gonna use that same green, that warm green, and just kind of come down the hill, just like this. Uh, I can put a little bit here where the house is, and maybe a little bit off the top. And this one that kind of comes down, continues down this hill and down this hill. <clears throat> there we go. And then just pull this color, just kind of pull this color out and get some green on here. So you're kind of grounding these little flowers a little bit. And also kind of defining this hill. And just kind of soften that color, just pull it out. You know, everything doesn't have to be colored in solid. Now I'm just making this dark back in here <clears throat> because that is back farther into the background. And then let's add a little of this blue um, to the sky. You know, you're just, you're kind of just pushing the sky around. So you really don't want to do a lot of big strokes. can kind of see where this hill just kind of comes down. I'm going to add a little more blue in here where you can see this is really in the shadows. And then maybe a little shadow. And let's add some green along <clears throat> the side of the path here. So where it turns, you can see how that just kind of builds that up a little bit just by bringing this around. Same, same with this side. Just kind of build that up a little bit as it comes around. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's add a little more detail in here. And I think I'm gonna add these little um, purple flowers in. Just the tips. So just the tips, and I'm just gonna stamp them in here a little bit. You know, they're pretty far in the distance, so I don't wanna make them too big. And then as they get closer, we can make them a little taller, especially, you know, in here. And you know, if you like that more detailed look, you don't even have to add any water to them. You just want to add just a tiny, tiny bit just to soften them up. <clears throat> that looks pretty good. So I'm going to now take some of this blue and drag some color just across the path. I just want to, you know, kind of mess it up a little bit and look like there's shadows so that we don't have a, um, you a really defined white area here and you really don't overthink it too much just just kind of mess it up a little bit and then uh, I'm going to add uh, my little branch in here 
And really what this is, is just something in the foreground, something bigger that shows that you are moving forward and things are kind of getting bigger here. And I'm gonna use my little, my little leaf. And just stamp this on here, just wherever. I just touch it. Add a little shadow in there. And then let's add just a little bit more grass kind of along this path here. We can overhang a little bit there and a little bit here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, I think I'm gonna add just a little more color. This is the brown. I think I'm gonna add a little color to the door. Kinda got lost on that side, so. And maybe a little bit to the chimney here too, as well. And let's add our little decorative bench in here. Now, you could use either one. This one has a back. And I grabbed both because both would work equally as well. This is from the wrought iron set. And um, I don't know if I showed you that in the very beginning, but this is what the set is here. It's the wrought iron set. I'm using this one, but this one will work equally well. So it kind of depends on how much you have going on here. If this is really busy area, you may want to use something shorter like this so you're not competing with all of this color. So I'm going to uh, look at both of these and kind of see which one works best. And I'm going to uh, use my positioner first, and I'm going to ink this in two colors. So the dark brown, and you want to make sure that you get this really dark, get enough ink on here. And then the dark blue, right over the top. And stamp that right in here, so you can see exactly where it's going now. I think that's fine. I'm not, I don't have too much going on back here that I'm gonna lose this little bench. Uh, but let's just look at the other one and just see uh, if this one will work better. So I'm gonna do the same with this guy. And ink it up with the dark brown, and then go right back over it with the dark blue. And stamp this right in the corner. And you know, I think that actually, I think that works a little bit better. So let's just go ahead and do this one. And I'm going to re-ink this again. Uh, most of the time you can just huff on things and just stamp it again. But in this case, you wanna make sure that this is really dark and you get enough color, both colors, that dark brown and the dark blue. And we can stamp it in there like that, so cute. And then just go over the seat of it. Uh, you don't have to go over the whole thing, but just kind of darken it a little bit. And then we wanna see uh, a little shadow under here. And let's just add a little grass, just so that it looks like it's kind of, uh, it kind of belongs here. Just a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think we are getting close to being finished with this little project.
so fun. You can always come back in and add some more flowers back in the background, but you can see how that shows that it's just kind of dropped off. Uh, you could, um, like I said, you could put something down below here, maybe some water if you wanted to uh, create maybe a tropical scene. And uh, you have a little, um, little cottage up here with maybe some palm trees and maybe you have a beach down here. So lots and lots of fun ways to use it this way and incorporate that little winding path in a different way. So I hope you guys like this video. I'm gonna go ahead and sign it and date it. Be sure you do that with yours. Uh, be sure you sign a date because it is your work and it is going to be different every time. So I hope you give this a try. Uh, I will see you next week on Facebook, Facebook Live. So uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you all next week.